Productions in Black on KGW. This is a sponsored presentation created by Hard and Hustle Productions. What I love most about being a woman is our flexibility. I've always felt that I could do anything. Before I knew it, I was doing everything. I'm a mother, farmer, philanthropist, oh yeah, lawyer. So it was important for me to make the right decisions and move in a professional way and trying to make this a better place for everyone. My name is Jacqueline Alexander, and this is Expressions in Black. So here on this property, I have 36.8 acres. I Yo, she do like, now I know she's about to cry about racism any minute now, but God damn it, man, motherfucker, you're doing great, man. Salute, man. You should be happy, right? You, you about to tell us how great America is, right? You about to tell us how great it is here, man. So here on this property, I have 36.8 acres. I just rounded up to 40. I've always felt like more black people should be involved in farming because it's our legacy. We have lost so much. Well, actually, when the white man showed up in, in, in Africa, there were some tribes that did that had good farming techniques, but overall, the farming techniques were very inefficient and um, they didn't um, they didn't make use of all of their arable land. But I guess you want to say, I guess, I mean, everybody, by that logic, everybody, every person who comes from a race, that race at one point was agricultural based. So, like, everybody could say that. So here on this property, I have 36.8 acres. I just rounded up to 40. I've always felt like more black people should be involved in farming because it's our legacy. We have lost so much land as black people. In the 20s, there were, I think it's 1.1 million black farmers. Fast forward today, there's 46,000. My vision is for young people to understand that this is an option and it's how we build generational wealth. We need to own the land. Everyone, welcome to Morale Orchards. And since today is Indigenous Peoples Day. I thought it'd be important for us to respect the ancestors here on this land before us that we we're just the stewards of, right? Absolutely. To honor the memory and give gratitude. For the African chieftains that saved us from a life in the fucking bush by selling us the white slave slavers and sending us over to the new world so we can have a better life. Cell phones and VCRs and shit. Because if that would have never happened, we'd all be fucking running around the jungle and shit with a bone through our nose. To our Native American brothers and sisters whose tears water the soil. Who own slaves at a higher yeah. clip than fucking white people. Yeah, I was the exact same thing. And freed their slaves fucking decades later than white people did. <laughs> I mean, like the 20s. Slaves. Originally, the vision was for me, I thought this land is beautiful. I want to build a house here. I wasn't even thinking about being a grower at that time because I was in law school. I chose law school to help myself. You know, it's helped me with my business and understand, you know, what the opportunities were. I first met Jackie as a law professor. She was in my class her very first semester in law school. From day one, she knew what she wanted. She knew she needed an educational background to get there. And she's been an agent for change. I first met you at the MLK lecture, and you and your husband, of course, were sponsoring that. Your husband, I'd love to see her husband. Press what if you'd love to see her husband. That lecture series, it wasn't until a little bit later that I heard about your role in making the York statue possible. For me, it was just getting York's story out. He was the first black man to be in a military expedition to vote because he was voting to make these decisions. So it was very important for me to have his presence here. 
on this campus. I think black history is precious, but it's something that drives me and I want it to be a part of that. This is ebony from January of 1967. I actually got it off of eBay for my husband because his family's featured in this magazine. They actually worked on the orchard that we own now. That's Papa. Okay, his, his, she might be a son, man. And that's his dog, King. I know my parents have both sacrificed a lot for me and my sister to live the life that we live. But looking back to see... I don't know, man. He might... <laughs> what y'all think, man? This is annoying. I'm not even convinced she's that good of a farmer because you've been doing all that stuff. You're lacking. You're gonna be lacking somewhere because farming is not something you do. Yeah, in, in conjunction with being a yeah, being a lawyer and an entrepreneur. Like, hold on, no, nah, <laughs> something. That, well, somebody's doing the land. It's just like fucking Fergie. Fergie, the fucking girl from fucking um Black Eyed Peas. She's got a fucking orchard, fucking like 10 times the size of this woman's orchard. And she's always on the road performing. Like, you don't need to fucking be there like tilling the soil, man. No, what I'm saying is, you, you, if, I mean, I understand if you're a, if you can say you're a landowner, but if you're, a, if you're saying you're out there farming, you're not, really, you're really not dedicating much time to anything else. Cause that is a, that's a round the clock. That's, that's more like a round the clock. I mean, or you just, you just, you have a lot of hired hands, you know? But she's making it seem like that's like she's doing all of it. Like you're not doing all of it. Yeah, she's yeah, I'm sure she's not. What I came from, it's a very eye-opening experience. I'm convinced her husband's a white man, man. Her son, the way her son talk, man, he he got he got glider blood in him, man. We don't talk like that, man. Yeah, um, that's, that we own now. <laughs> that's Papa, and that's his dog King. I know my parents have both sacrificed a lot for me and my sister to live the life that we live. But looking back to see what I came from, it's a very eye-opening experience. Once you have children, you feel like I've got to move them through this path of life. That's when I started thinking about legacies and what was no I got gloves, to man? They just putting the shit in there with their bare hands. Once you have children, this is the one and only feel time like I've got to move them through this. this is right, the exactly. Camera. It's like a drug exactly. lab. Like, that's exactly. when I started thinking about legacies and what was I going to do for them? And what was I going to leave behind? Know Your Fruit came about to deal with the issue of food waste. There's this huge food waste issue, right? Like we have people that are hungry, but yet we are a society that will throw away perfectly edible fruit. What happens in this community, there's a lot of waste in what's called cold. Yeah, that crackhead that um begging for money, you don't want a fucking apple, man. I'll tell you that much. And so I thought, you know what? I could actually buy coal from all these growers and freeze dry it. This facility was just raw land when I purchased it. Yo, so yeah, this I came chick out. is fucking living the American dream, man. Yeah, you see that she shit? She was she, like, she's getting ready to go to space, man. You know, right. she good. <laughs> Yo, she's living the dream. Her life is great. This is a great American success story, man. And so I thought, you know what? I could actually buy coal from all these growers and freeze dry it. This facility was just raw land when I purchased it. So yeah, I came out here and decided to be a contractor, took on this project and it was hard, but I was able to pull it through. The Who squirt- believes she was driving the tractor, man? That's not Who that? Who believes that? Who believes that, Probably for that photo contractor shoot, but that's took it. took on this project and it was hard. <laughs> that bitch act like she doing something. <laughs> She got the tractor too, man. On top of that, man. God damn. But I was able to pull it through. The square footage is 36,000 square feet. We'll be up and running by the summer of next year. I wanted to create a product that was traceable and you could actually see where the fruit was grown and you know your fruit. We stand here now seeing something that was once an idea. And it's just a joy to be able to support another African American woman who not only dares to dream, but dares to undergo whatever she has to go through in order to make that dream a reality. 
There's a lot of different professions related to the food industry. And I want trained people in this industry to know that there's more to just being a grower or a farmer. And I feel like this is the right time to do something that's meaningful. Yo, she's winning, man. Yeah, but they left up. They left an important part. What is she going to be selling? Wine, wine, wine right? Yeah. Okay, so this is like a my like minority government funded program. That's all it is. What do you mean minority government funded? They give you the loans to to go ahead and do that, and then you get the contracting based on minorities and things of that nature. I should, it's a, just a business. She didn't say nothing about no loans. I'm you sure think? she may have gotten some, but she, that sister was doing that thing, man. I mean, shit. I mean. I didn't see anything about anybody giving her anything. I don't know. It wasn't, but you know, who knows? Maybe, maybe. Expressions in Black on KGW is a sponsored presentation from Heart and Hustle Productions. All my life, I've always looked to be inspired and to inspire others. That's a privilege for me. That's who I am. I think that's something that I learned early on from my family around me and the community that raised me. I think as a black man, I've always been super aware that examples are extremely important. I have to play my part and I have to help us move forward as a community every day. I've always respected where I come from, where I'm at. Well, if you expected where you come from, man, how come you got a white wife? It's <laughs> important. I have to play my part and I have to help us move forward as a community every day. I've always respected. I have to, I have to play my part and I always have to help us as a community move forward. <laughs> <laughs> well, why you ain't just, why, why do you feed us all like, it's unnecessary. You don't have to do that. Just talk about how great of a business you have and how all this community shit, man, you don't fucking marry some fucking she ain't even no frizzy haired fucking goddamn Bekisha, man. You got a goddamn Meredith. You got a goddamn, you got a Kirsten, man. <laughs> you ain't even Bekisha, man. Come on, man. You, you, you hiding, man. You hiding from the community, man. Yeah, he capping. Why he say it's not necessary? You I'm don't a... have to say all of that shit. How do you do all that by selling sneakers? Well, sneakers are a big deal to the sun, man. But it's like, yeah, I just don't know how. I don't know. But it's it's just it's just bizarre. That's just shucking and ju that's just like the shit they write on the back of a cereal box to make you think it's more than cereal. Yeah, I was expecting him to show up with fucking Grace Jones or some shit or, or fucking, you know what I'm saying? Like he. It, this is your wife after talking all that shit. Hey, Ock, uh, PN in the chat said update her company filed for bankruptcy in 2022. Oh, shit. <laughs> see, like I told you, said so you do you doing all that stuff. You're going to be something's going to take a hit. You're going to take a hit somewhere. You're, you're going to be messing up somewhere. Doing too, too much. Good to be too. She, she overextended herself. All my life, I've always looked to be inspired and to inspire others. That's a privilege for me. That's who I am. I think that's something that I learned early on from my family around me and the community that raised me. I think as a black man, I've always been super aware that examples are extremely important. I have to play my part and I have to help us move forward as a community every day. I've always respected where I come from where I'm at, and I've always been aware of where I want to go. Yeah, you want to go to fucking Gladden Town, 
That's where you want to go. If I can't express who I am, if I can't stand up for what I believe in, I'm doing a disservice to the community. My name is Fabian. Fabian. Yeah. Tell me what you think about this. The best thing a black man can do if he's wealthy and general and he's wealthy and he's and he's and he has upward mobility, the best thing he can do for the community is to find a black woman, have a bunch of black kids, and raise those kids in the affluence or in the luxury that he's created for himself. What do you think about that? Yeah, yeah, sure. I mean, I just I, I don't think he really cares all that much. I mean, he's doing well, so he can say he can say whatever he, he wants to make it sound like he's you know doing something good. Yeah, but it's like all that talk doesn't like if you really wanted to better the black community, you would go to fucking Harlem or fucking Memphis. Find a nice black community, build a house there, bring your goddamn fucking 4C black wife there with your little nappy headed kids and fucking live the grand old good life with them. And you know what I'm saying? In a fucking black community or some shit. This yeah, motherfucker, I, yeah. what the fuck? I don't think he's really thinking that much about it. I don't think he cares as much he's as he's talking it's, it's about like the, it. It's like the kind of shit that you put on a, a resume. You know, you use flowery language to make it seem more important than what it was. Like, I'm helping the community. I'm pushing, you know, I'm pushing us forward. How? Exactly how? Specifically. It doesn't mean shit. Especially in that last one where it, it focused so much on her being a black woman doing all this. Stuff. Like, what? How's that going to relate to me as a black man? It does. It's just like, it's just mesmerism. It's just that's supposed to, me it's supposed to put you to sleep and mesmerize you into... You know, because it resonates with just like standard lore of contemporary society. You're not supposed to think up critically about it. I just always love to draw. Always love to create beautiful things. My mother played a really iconic role in my life. She raised me in a community center in the East. His mother, is, is that his mother? Oh. Other played a really iconic role in my life. She raised. Oh, he's biracial too. Who are those black people he was posing with earlier? It didn't seem like he had a. What the fuck? Yeah, his mom's biracial. That woman looks white. Yeah, in that picture, she does look pretty white. Yeah, I think it's the saturation on the picture, but she's light-skinned, at least. It's me in a community center in the east end of Louisville, Kentucky. And so through that, I was always exposed to sports. This is his mom. Well, this is, this is yeah, his who's mom. On the, yeah, I don't, we don't know. I don't know. The lady in Mark, the yellow doesn't look like purpose. the lady in the previous photograph. Yeah. When I was looking back at a lot of this work, this didn't just happen, you know, like it was it was building for a while. Nobody was talking about purpose work. And now it's what's fueling, fueling the brand. I think purpose storytelling for me is a relationship. It's a relationship with communities. It's not a transaction. When I got to Nike, I began that relationship here in Portland through mentorship that turned into a program that we started around Black History Month. Back in 2011, we really wanted to elevate the voice of our black athletes so their stories could be told. Yeah, because, you know, black athletes don't have no voice. <laughs> the fuck is he talking about? It's just jazz, man. It's it was a program it's based like on mentorship. Pepsi, Pepsi is the choice of a new generation, man. It's just long form advertising shit for high school students this young generation's language of answering their call to greatness with design black history month then turned into some of the other purpose programs that we now have today whether it be equality equality has no boundaries until we all win whether it be you can't stop sport 
this is a message that is saying, hey, you know what? We're a sport community that's going to influence and change the world. It really started a movement with LeBron and Serena and Kevin Durant and Megan Rapino and all these different impactful athletes. Blacks and weirdos. Please Activism. standing side by side, <laughs> telling the world that equality should have no boundaries, that we should all have equal playing fields. It's a privilege for me to be able to be a part of that conversation. <laughs> L, L, come here. You're too close to the camera, babe. Hi, my name is L. This is Daddy, and this is my sister Coco. There's not a suit that I put on. There are, there are some cute kids, though. Yeah. When I wake up and go to work, that I change. Hey, this is Daddy. When I come home, it's the same suit. Get there, time. <laughs> oh my God, two of them. Woo. That's y'all don't know how. When one of them is a, is a handful. Two of them. I come home. It's the same suit. Get there, time. <laughs> At the end of the day, this this is what matters. You know, this is the legacy. This is why it's important to be an example. Life for me yeah. is about legacy. We can't choose how long we're going to be on Earth. But the time we're here, like we can choose what we do with it. Working from home has been an amazing time to just be able to be in a space with family. You can reflect on who I am, where I came from, where I am right now, and where I want to go. You know, literally this space that I've been working in for over a year now has been my creative uh, playground. Actually feeds who I am. You know, when you talk about being creative, when you talk about being an example, we should absolutely bring that to work with us. When I look around and I see stories from my ancestors, artifacts from my mom, seeing these objects of past, present, and future chasers, people that are creating greatness, it just reminds me of why I'm here. You know, it reminds me of my responsibility and the example that I have to continue to put forth. You know, for me, with two young daughters, I see infinite possibilities. And I see this idea of the future and, and what it could be. If anything I took away from 2020 is that let's keep doubling down on the inspiration because inspiration is what is going to take us to 2021, 2022 and beyond. Oh God, they got so full of shit. Um, oh my, yeah, that shit is a cap. fucking shit show. That nigga's I mean, tapping on his ass. Yeah. I mean, to top it all off, too, you could see in like everybody's his expression and his daughter's. I work with small children, and those kids are fucking hellions. They run that show. And yeah. he just he just grovels after him all the time, man. That's a whole other dimension to that shit. And it's a rich, it's a rich kid thing, too. Yeah. Salute to um go Will Will Pine. Will Pine says, um, all this has been done by Gladys a thousand times. So that we're supposed to be in awe that sons do it too. I don't get it. Yeah, man. We we, 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 we you gotta give us credit for doing regular shit. I take care of my kids, man. Um salute to Nate Ways, man. He says expressions in black outlined in white. So why make it rapping though? Why not Eli Manning? Larry that guy Bird. Was a fucking He's not a weirdo. He's not a weirdo. What's up? What's up, little Mingo? You got impressed man. with that guy, man? You weren't impressed with that guy? No, I wasn't impressed with that fucking jigaboo. <laughs> I seen right through that guy, Zach. He's a fucking, he's a fucking fraud. We'll see You're watching one. Expressions in Black on KGW. This is a sponsored presentation created by Hard and Hustle Production. <laughs> I remember the first time I came in the studio, I was 11. You know, now I do this for a living. So my perspective was that I didn't care what nobody else thought. And imagine how many people told me, hey man, you still doing that? Hell yeah, I'm still doing this. Expressing myself has always been about freedom. Being able to tell any story that I want to tell. Yeah. Youngin came up strong with a will to live. 
Daddy never came home. Mama in the pen. So his relative got him for the devil did. I was a kid that always said, what if? We poor, bro, but what if we could do this? It's like deja vu. I see it all the time. For me, I was blessed to be around people that really did music and made a living. You don't understand the feeling to see what it's like. So I seen the business side. There is actually a way that you can feed your family, create some ownership through your voice. It's like deja vu. I had Hey, y'all. Uh... What's up, bro? Sugar, hold on. Let me see something. There is actually a way that you can feed your. Is that is she? Is that a system, bro? Sugar? Mm, no. Maybe she's <laughs> biracial. <laughs> and this is that like she's just weird. Man. Yeah, like, maybe she's like Spanish or something. Yeah, the kids don't, got like don't, none of the don't, none of these people got. Black counterparts. The woman, you, these two men, all of them with white people. <laughs> it's just bizarre, man. Oh, I hate these motherfuckers so much, though. And yeah, then just... the two black men, one rapping, one doing shoes. Wow. <laughs> That's like so important. I mean, at least the son sister, she doing apples. That's stupid. This shit's stupid too. All of them stupid. That's the fucking electrician. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, like, here's the thing, though. You don't have to do all the blackly black shit. Like, trust me, I live my life. I'm around people all the time. You don't have to, like, I'm blacker than black, black than black, black than black. And then you, on top of that, you're like, literally your whole life is like everything other than that. It's just fucking weird, man. Well, they don't, you're not the target audience for that. Rich, rich sun people and gliders are the target target audience for that. No, In order to, gliders. because, because, sun people being rich and successful goes against what you're supposed to think they deal with. You're, it's supposed to be like, all sun people are extremely intelligent and capable and visionary and inspired. But there's just these gliders and overalls sitting behind the bushes everywhere, jumping out and shooting at them, so they can't do shit. So when they make it and they're rich and they're golfing and they're wearing expensive clothes and the big house and the, all that bullshit, they have to tell a story about, they have to put a big old smoke screen of blackity black in order to try to make it make sense. So that you're not focused. On, so in other words, like they don't just get up and say like, yeah, I, you know, I, I got a degree or did what I did and I made a bunch of money, period, end of story. No, they have to add a whole bunch of, you know, they gotta they gotta have a sad sob story because yeah yeah as you know even though I grew up in Memphis I got a lot of uh, flack from black people like you don't understand you grew up in a two parent home your father was there and I'm like okay so my mama did the right thing was big whoop like so what Girl, sugar, I'm, I, got I still I'm still a human being I still have feelings I'm still dealing with life. Just because I grew up in a two-parent home and my dad made money and my mom was a stay-at-home mom, I still went to a hood's ass school. Some people give you flack for anything. I grew up my grandparents. They gave me flack for growing up with my grandparents. Some people don't give a damn. It Man, paid off because I, it paid off because um, you know, yeah, I grew up, I went to a hood school but I have morals because my father was there. Mm. My dad, my dad made sure, you know, he instilled like a lot of values in me. You know, he the one raised me to vote Republican. He told me never vote Democrat. He was Shout already ahead of it. Shout out to Papa Sugar, man. Yeah, he Shout never voted. Sugar, my dad that's... never voted Democrat. Like he see right through them. That's a great man. Yeah, He's ahead man. of his time. Uh, the shout out to Papa Sugar, Sugar man. Let's 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 see this one more, but then we're gonna go to Rumble, man. Make sure you hit the make sure you take the five dollar challenge, support the channel hey. back for suspension, man. Go ahead. Hey, hey, Ock, you back on YouTube? Yeah, yeah. I'm going to Rumble in a minute though. Uh, with the oh, new right. friends. I'm on, I'm, on, I'm on Rumble right now. And I, okay, I, I yeah. thought you were know, still on Rumble. Yeah, because I got I gotta do friends. I ain't doing friends over here. I just got back, man. I'm trying to tread lightly, man. 
Expressions in Black on KGW is a sponsored presentation from Heart and Hustle Productions. Like even that heart and hustle, it's like struggle. Like you got a heart and hustle. Like you know, you got heart and hustle for some damn lame rap music that don't nobody want to listen to but gliders and some ugly ass shoes that nobody gonna wear but some gliders. Cause his people ain't gonna his people ain't gonna support him. And we don't eat apples. Man. She had like a sweet potato farm or maybe <laughs> um, some greens or something like that. That's your uh, business been booming. The most powerful word in the English language is black. Give you me for one of these segments. Yo, man, look at this guy. <laughs> the most powerful word oh in the English God. language. It's black. Oh, yeah. oh, okay. It is both dark hey. and light. But it means so many different things on an emotional capacity, on a spiritual capacity. It is so many different things. And we use it so many different times. Oh, yeah. I'm a dancer, I'm an artist, I'm an entrepreneur. I'm fluid and I identify with a lot of different things. Yeah, we can yeah. I know. Listen, I know he didn't grow up, grow up around some man. They would have beat the goofy out this nigga, man. <laughs> oh yeah, every, every it, it's amazing. Like everything they say about gliders is false about gliders and true about them. Like, look at the extent to which this dude is the, the self, just the dripping self importance, just centering yourself and self celebration and the arrogance and the entitlement is disgusting. I have yet to see a full black person with a full black family. Everybody got mixed race children and he's biracial. No, not, and they just so blackly black, black. He would cross the street if he saw you coming, Brown Sugar. <laughs> yeah, because I got, I, got, I got a hole, not a pole. Yo, cheers. I'm Hoss Wires, <laughs> and this is my expression. <laughs> Dance is my life, man. The first time I danced, honestly, I just remember being happy. It's how I express myself. I'm always growing, and this is really when I feel liberated. Come on, I, it's, it's yeah, I know. Five minutes, five I know. Yeah, bro, this is like torture, dude. You try to torture us. I know, I know, man. I know, man. These, 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 these ones. I, I've done, I've done so many of these, man. It, it, yeah. it, like this, this one right here. This, this was the all-time favorite. This was, this was the. This I was remember the, this one. This was, this was, this was, this was the favorite. I remember favorite. that one. Whoa. Didn't she do hair or something? She a damn witch. <laughs> she is a fucking witch. She works. She is a witch. Look at her. Burn his face. She crazy. I realized over time that for me, that morning is the most important to just be myself and be comfortable in my space. She don't even got prognathism. She like, you know what I'm saying? Look at her fucking <laughs> look. That racial. Look at her well, her lips, they're not yeah. pump or anything. Her nose not hot. Her baby hairs are laid. Myself and be comfortable in my space. A lantern, the candles, it's just part of what I do. And I don't know how I started. When I could hear the birds or the rain or whatever, I wanted to be as present in that moment as possible in order to do that. I didn't want to turn on my lights. I didn't want to let the rest of the world in yet. What? having the opportunity to tell stories through clothing and something that my people are rooted in just really transformed my life. 
the clothes that I love is something that is really meaningful to me. Weird ass black something women. That when I put it on, I can embody what that is as a homage to like our hair and our culture is really, really important to me and bringing it into this outdoor space, which is so something she new. got good, silky, good hair. Like she got literally like one A hair. Yeah, her hair is pretty. And she making bandanas for black women to come in this shit. <laughs> Oh my God. I do genuinely exactly. feel like I'm providing people with something that's really good for them. Something when that's really good for them. Name is that Justin is Grace. a white lady. Cover that shit up. That is a white lady. Rachel Dolezal got her beat on blackness. I love 